Let's start with Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. How about that to be a very good reference about the law of God? People want to scoff at, oh, the, the law, the, you mean the Old Testament law? Oh, you, and it drives me nuts when you have Christians today. Well, don't you know that the, like, what are you going to do? Put a disobedient child to death and just mocking at the word of God. Like, I thought you were supposed to believe the Bible. What's the matter with you? You're going to use the same arguments that an atheist uses. Shame on you if you call yourself a Christian and you're going to mock the law of the Lord. The Bible says, my delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law doth I meditate day and night. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be focused on that. I love it. And you're not going to say the stupid things that aren't even true. It's not like, oh, so if your child talks back to you, you're going to put him to death. That's not what the Bible teaches right. at all. Not even close. Good. And I'm not going to get off into that tonight. Let's keep reading here. Verse number three. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so. Again, imagine a singing voice. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Their way is going to die. It's going to go away but the way of the righteous is going to stand forever. We need to be reminded of that. Righteousness is the way to go. You, it's easy to get deceived sometimes by the, by the prosperity of the wicked, the supposed prosperity. Psalms will help keep us in line. Look at, look at Psalm 2. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heaven shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet if I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Look at verse number nine. Again, a song. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings. Be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and ye perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Imagine if Psalm 2 was like on the pop charts. <laughs> right? And that this is the most popular song of the week. Casey Kasem's Top 40 is his number one. <laughs> Psalm 2 for the 10th week in a row. <laughs> hey, praise God. Look at all the truth that's in this. If, you could, if this is just, you know, it's, it's saying beware, kings. Beware, rulers. Why? Because of judgment. Do what's right. I mean, real basic principles of right and wrong. Look at Psalm 5. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry, my King and my God. For unto thee will I pray. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness. Neither shall evil dwell with thee. Reference to a holy God. There is no pleasure in the wickedness at all. It's, it's pretty stark contrast. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. There's a teaching that God hates all workers of iniquity. If this is being sung in Baptist churches across the world, maybe people wouldn't freak out when they hear the reprobate doctrine, when, when the most vile people in the world are being called out for being animals, for being dogs, for being brute beasts, Amen. 
Maybe they wouldn't freak out so much if they had the Psalms playing over and over again in their minds. Oh, this actually matches up with what the Psalms are teaching me about wicked people. Verse 6, Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing. The Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. There's the mercy. Hey, these wicked, bloody people that are murdering the innocent, that are just out to destroy, you know what? They're going to have judgment, but as for me, I'm going to seek your mercy. And humbly, look at it, I'm going to go to you in fear and, and come into the house of mercy. These guys are not that way. And there are people like that out there. And this is, you're going to see this dichotomy all the time through all these psalms. Of there's really wicked people, there's really bad people out there that hate God, who have nothing to do with them. And then there's people that fear God. Ones that fear God are the ones that receive the mercy, and the ones that hate God are the ones that don't. And judgment is coming, and judgment is there, and judgment is real, and we need to remember the judgment. But we're told not to judge. <laughs> I'm not the one casting them into hell. But if I tell you that God's going to, you can call me whatever you want. This, that doesn't change what the book says. If you're, if you're going to say it's my judgment, then you're just fooling yourself because you want to hate the messenger when you really just hate the message itself. You really hate the author.